Final piece tonight. This is a quote from a man who was sent to prison for being anti-Nazi and was ex executed in 1945. And it bears out what I mentioned in the opening piece of letting go of other people's opinions, people who don't serve you, and situations that can be avoided. And he said, stupidity is a more dangerous enemy of the good than malice. And one may protest against evil. It can be exposed and if need be, prevented by the use of force. Evil always carries within itself the germ of its own subversion, in that it leaves behind in human beings at least a sense of unease. But against stupidity, we are defenceless. Neither protests nor the use of force accomplish anything here, and reasons fall on deaf ears, Facts that contradict one's prejudgments simply need not be believed. And in such moments, the stupid person even becomes critical. And when facts are irrefutable, they are pushed aside as inconsequential, as incidental. And in all this, the stupid person, in contrast to the, the malicious one, is utterly self-satisfied and being easily irritated becomes dangerous by going on the attack. And for that reason, greater caution is called for when dealing with a stupid person than a malicious one. And he said, never again will we try to persuade the stupid person with reasons, for it is a senseless and dangerous game. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Letters and Papers from Prison. And that was written over 70 years ago and is as relevant now as it was back then. And back then, an oppressive regime was trampling all over humanity with their psychotic ways and means. And 70 plus years later, the same oppressive parasitic race are doing the same again. And we must come together and fight as one. Otherwise the lessons from World War II and what happened to the people will be lost again. Just as the lessons from World War I were never heeded and the Second War followed shortly after. We all have to come together. I've heard several people recently complain I don't like this person or I don't like that person and yet little as to the full reasons as to why and I'm asking all of you again to look within as quite often the traits of the person you don't like is within you and that is a lesson for us all to learn the person you don't like is not the other person. That is the reflection. It is you. And it's a harsh lesson to learn. I know all too well. Having gone through it myself. But it's one all of us must overcome and master to develop the self in a better way. And this task can be achieved by 45-55. If you only dislike a person at 45, not 0 to 20, then more tolerance is afforded and it's not back to the love and hate. Where is the triality in that? It's in the middle. That noise is there. Heater going on, by the way. But... No one is perfect, least of all me. But do we dismiss people because they're not perfect or work with each other to find a common ground to go forward with? Thinking and acting different has no place for love and hate dynamics 
black and white scenarios, blue or red pill scenarios. Thinking and acting different is doing something, anything that was better than before, not repeating it. We are in World War Three. There's no guns and bombs this time are required. It's a war of the minds and hearts. And how will yours stand up? Will you allow the programming of the old world to define you? Or will you really think and act different? Really be the change and really be a better version of you tomorrow than today.